Chicago and St. Charles. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm actually in Evanston looking out the window thinking, wow, it's winter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we walked the dog this morning very carefully because it was icy. Oh. I know and it. I have, yep, I have two dogs, and my husband takes them out in the morning. He's like, woo, bear with me. First of all, um, I am an interrupter myself, so I feel like turnabout is fair play. Um, but also, you know, if you're thinking um, that something is confusing or um, that you don't understand something, it, chances are very, very good that someone else feels the same way. So please, don't feel shy. Just go ahead and interrupt me. That's why I'm saying keep the line open. And just come off a of mute if you're on self-mute to ask a question. Not a problem at all. All right, okay. so what, what are we trying to do today? So um, what I want to do is walk you through how to use uh, Quick Parts, which is a feature in Word um, that if you understand that it will allow you to be able to create building blocks, if you will, um, for proposals, cover letters, things like that, so that when you're requested, uh, when you're asked to provide a proposal, you can assemble one very quickly, but also very accurately. So you may be able to assemble a proposal quickly now, but it it may be done at the expense of accuracy. So I, I want to show you how Quick Parts uh, can help with that. Um, so we're going to create some Quick Parts. If you don't have Word open, Microsoft Word, I'd, I'd recommend you go ahead and do that because we're certainly going to have a, a, a follow the leader here uh, in this class. And also, um, once you've got your Quick Parts, we're just going to I'm going to show you how to incrementally build a proposal. Um, I'm also going to show you as part of this how to use document properties effectively. So if you're not already using the document properties that are built into Word, they can be very, very convenient for streamlining uh, functionality in, in your proposals. And finally, how to use fields. Any questions about this so far? And if you don't shout out, I'll assume there's no questions, and I'll keep going. No, it's all um, good. OK, now I do try to move fast. I know that we're all very busy. So if at some point I'm going too fast, again, like I said, just shout out. But um, I know that you know people who actually take the time to get training are usually pretty swift. So um, you, know, you want to get through it and move on to the next part of your day. So if at any point you need me to slow down just or go back over something, well, let me know. It's not a problem. All right. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is uh, talk about using quick parts. So why do you want to use them? One is efficiency. If you take the time to write out a piece of a proposal that is going to stay standard every time and you put it into a quick part, then when you need it again, you don't have to rewrite it. You don't have to cut and paste it from another document. You can simply go to your quick parts, grab it, and drop it in. It's also more accurate. So if you take the time to write standard verbiage and proofread it and you know go back the next day and make sure that it's grammatical and there's no spelling errors, you can be assured that even though you're assembling your document quickly, it is still accurate. You're not making rookie mistakes that would make you look unprofessional in a proposal. And you also have consistency. And that's also very important as you prepare proposals. You want to make sure that, you know, for example, if, and I had this happen to me recently, I, I submitted a proposal and then they asked for another, ver, you know, a revision. And because I was using quick parts, I could be sure that I was consistent in what I was putting into the proposal uh, from one version to another. And all of those are really important uh, when we are you know, in our own businesses and, and like I said, we want to look professional. OK, so um, I'm glad it's all ladies on this call because I think you can appreciate this. Um, when I think of quick parts, what I think of is instead of the mess of shoes that currently exists at the bottom of my closet, um, it, it is a very nice way to group and organize things so that they're right there and you can just grab it, so to speak, off that shelf. And they're all paired up, you're not looking for the other one, and so on. So again, I find that when I teach these concepts, what's really 
helps people is give them an image and then you know if this image doesn't work for you substitute another image but you know this one in my mind works well for what quick parts are all right so let's move into where we can find them so and from this slide I'm going to jump over to Word so if you don't have Word open you might want to do that um, just a word uh, just a note I am using Word 2016 so your word might look a little different um, if you're using 2013 or 2010 not significantly different but it might look a little different so you're going to want to be on the insert tab as I have circled here uh, in Word and you're going to want to actually go, let me move this little tiny window out of the way here, you're going to want to actually go to the quick parts section on the right hand side. So I'm going to take a minute and jump out of the presentation and go to Microsoft Word myself, or at least I'm going to try to do that. There we go. Thank you, computer. All right. Now, hopefully you are seeing that I am in Microsoft Word now, and sometimes it yeah. takes a second. Okay, all right, so I'm on the Insert tab, and where do we want to be? We want to be all the way over here in Quick Parts. You may or may not have noticed this before. First of all, let me do a check. Are you both running 2016, or are you running something that looks really similar to this? Very similar. I think I'm in 16. Okay, and Linda? Okay, I'm going to assume Linda's okay. Um, so, um, I am unfortunately my computer died yesterday, so oh. it's um, I am watching on the phone here. So, but I do see your screen. Good. Okay. Well, I'm sorry to hear your computer died, but um, hopefully you'll have a brand new toy soon. Yeah, it gives a chance to start fresh. You yes, know. It does. Yes, it does. Okay, so what we're going to do is I'm going to quickly show you this menu here, and then we're going to dive into creating some quick parts. So you will notice here that I already have some quick parts created. So these quick parts that I've created are pieces and parts of proposals that I routinely give. So remember, I teach computer classes. That's what I do for a living. So when I am asked for a proposal, I am typically being asked for, you know, I want to have a class on functions, or I want to have a class on basic Excel. So I've created different little snippets of text that I've, you know, finally crafted over time so that I know that they say exactly what I want them to say. So I'll just demonstrate an example of this for you so that you can see what this, how simple this is. So I'm starting with a blank document and I'm just going to take this snippet here and I'm going to drop it in. And that's as simple as it is. So I wrote all this text before, I did all this formatting, I even put the box, so everything you're seeing on the screen was done in advance, and then I stored it as a quick part, so all I have to do is drop it in when I'm called for a proposal on basic Excel. So it's really just as easy as that, so I'm going to go ahead and create a new page here, so to show you how you actually can make one. So the first thing to think about is what do you want to make into a quick part? Well, the best thing to make into a quick part is something that is you're asked for over and over again that is going to stay standard or pretty gosh darn similar from proposal to proposal. So let's say that I offer um, a, I'm just going to make something up, a manicure service, okay, and I've been asked to have, and I'm sorry, this is very small, let me actually make this bigger so we can all see what I'm doing here, okay, so now I've just made it bigger. So I'm just going to type in any old random text here that is going to describe my service in detail or um, as detailed as I want it to be, okay? Um, I can include pricing here. I don't have to include pricing, um, but again, it's something that it's routine text that you're dropping in all the time. So now I've typed in this text. All I need to do is select it, and I'm going to go back to the insert menu, 
and I'm going to go to Quick Parts, and I'm going to go to Save Selection to Quick Part Gallery. Okay, so does everybody see that on their screen? Yeah. Okay. Um, so once I do that, I'm going to see this menu. Now, my Quick Part has a name. Okay, so you could name it whatever you want. Uh, in the quick parts that I showed you that were, that were my real quick parts, I have names like Excel Basics and uh, Conditional Formatting and other classes, the titles of classes that I give. Um, the gallery that you're going to save it in is quick parts. We're not going to get into the galleries today because that's beyond the scope of an hour-long class. However, um, do be aware there are other galleries. Um, but in this case, you simply are using quick parts. Now, you probably are going to want to create a category for it. So for example, I have a category that is dedicated just to Excel because I'm asked for proposals on Excel classes so often. Okay, but I, in this case, this has nothing to do with that, so I can create a new category here, and I can say manicure services, okay? And that means that this text, this snippet, whatever it is I've written here, is going to be stored in a little snippet titled manicure service and in a category called manicure services. Um, I could also probably more realistically, I would name that something like, I don't know, personal care services or something like that. You can add a description as to what that snippet is in case you forget or you just want to make sure. And you're going to leave this in the building blocks document template. Um, again, don't bother to change this. There's no reason uh, to do that. Now, down here, this last box here, generally the option, the default option is insert content only, meaning when I call for this quick part, just take what's in the quick part and insert it. But you can force it to create a new paragraph or you can force it to create a new page. So either one of these either one of these three is useful and valid. Typically you're just inserting the content. So I'm going to go ahead and hit OK and what that's going to do is just save this quick part now. Okay, so let's go back now and look at the quick parts that I have. Remember I said these are the names, so I've named this quick part advanced functions. I named this quick part basic functions. These are all stored in a category called Excel. Let's go down and find the one that we just created. Okay, we'll go past all of my real ones. And now you can see I created this category, Manicure Services, and here is the quick part that I created. So I'm going to stop right there and see are there any questions uh, conceptually about what I've done. No. Okay. Good. All right, so now, how do I use that quick part? I created it, so how do I use it? So I'm actually just going to come down here to a blank space in my document. I'm going to go up to Quick Parts, and I'm going to go to my menu of Quick Parts, and I'm going to select it. And that's all I have to do. And then it gets dropped in. Any formatting that you apply, so if you apply bold or italics or spacing or um, headers or anything that you apply in your text that you save to a quick part will get dropped in. So again, it, it not only saves you time in writing the text over and over again, it also saves you time in formatting. You just get it all perfect and professional looking when you have the time so that when you don't have the time and somebody calls up and says, hey, I need a proposal from you by Friday, you just drop these pieces in. So. Let me talk really quickly about um, putting in multiple pieces. So we just created one snippet here. But typically your proposal is going to have a cover letter and it's also going to have a description of the service you're offering and then it's probably going to have something with pricing and then you're probably going to put in some type of signature block. So I'm just going to demonstrate using the ones that I've created for myself so you can see how these look. So I'm just going to make a blank sheet of paper here by getting rid of what we had. So I'm starting blank. 
and I'm going to go to my quick parts and I'm going to come down and the first thing I'm going to choose is a cover letter. Okay, so I have proposal cover letter. So here, and notice that this is under my category general proposal. So I created these quick parts and I put them in a category called general proposal. So I'm going to first start with the proposal cover letter. So I pick this quick part. And now notice it's dropped in a proposal cover letter. So again, I don't have to create it from scratch each time. And in a minute, I'll talk about what these things are here and how we can use them to make things even faster. Um, but we'll leave those aside for a minute. So here's my cover letter. Now I'm going to just go ahead and insert a page break. And now I'm going to put in the quick part that the person has asked me about. So let's say that they said, you know what, I need a class on basic functions. I'm going to just come to my quick parts menu. I'm going to pick on, pick up the quick part menu, uh, little quick part snippet that talks about basic functions. And it's just going to drop it in there. So here's all the text I've written and looked over and looked over again and again gotten all of the you know typos out of there and so on and so forth and now I just drop it in. So that's my uh, proposal, what I'm going to do for them, what they've asked me for. And now I'm going to come back to my quick parts again and I'm going to put in a pricing block. So again, you know, in a typical proposal you're going to have a pricing information block. So again, I'm just going to drop in the pricing information block. And so again, it's got all that stuff that is standard that you're always going to want to have in your proposal, whatever that might be. Um, and finally, I'll put in a signature block. So again, I need to have a place to sign and I need for them to have a place to sign. And again, all this was formatted before I saved it so that I've got it in here. So in about two minutes, I have built the bones of a proposal um, for someone. So now let me stop right there and see, uh, are there any questions about this? No. Okay. Nope, all good. Okay. Um, uh, okay, so let's move on now. And let's, let's look at the cover letter that I have, I'm showing here. So first of all, this is all very well and good, except that you might be thinking, well, gee, you know what? Uh, each cover letter is going to be for a different person so or a different client. How do I make sure, and I don't know if you guys have had this happen to you, but um, it's happened to me, not where I've sent it like that, but where, you know, back in my corporate days, um, I received things from people where clearly it had been cut and pasted and someone else's name, they, they forgot to pull out someone else's name or somebody, uh, some other company's name. So I always found that um, rather amusing because, it, because it's um, sloppy work to begin with and sometimes it was a breach of confidentiality. But in any case, you certainly don't want to have that happen to you. So it's very, very easy to do that when you're cutting and pasting and you're in a hurry. However, here um, I'm going to avoid that by using something called document properties. So before I go into detail here, I'm going to jump back to my PowerPoint slide and we're going to look at uh, document properties here. And where do I want to start out with document properties? Here we go. All right. So where do we find document properties? Hold on, I've got to get back into my presentation mode here. There we go, come on, there we go. So where are you going to find document properties? Well, you're going to find them in the file tab or menu. And really, they're, that's also called the backstage view. So if you ever are Googling, and you know you're not quite sure what that terminology is. Um, Microsoft Office calls anything in the file view the backstage view. So it's going to be in the file menu, and it's going to be once you're here, you're going to go across to properties up here. So there are some basic properties here, but you're going to really want to 
drill down, click down on the properties, and then you're going to see a menu that says advanced properties. And that's where you're going to really be able to put in most of your uh, more sophisticated properties. So right down here. So again, let me restate that. It's in the file menu. Once you get to this, what they call the backstage view, you're going to come over here to properties, and you're going to click on the down arrow, and you're going to get to advanced properties. And once you're in advanced properties, yellow, come on computer, there we go, you're going to see a menu that has a whole bunch of uh, fields that you can fill in. So let me talk you through how I use this. Um, so that you can then decide how you want to use it. So for the title, in the title field, I will put in the title of the proposal. So if I'm making a proposal to the Women's Business Development Center, I will make up a name that says Proposal for WBDC uh, Plug and Play Presentation or something uniquely identifiable. I will leave my name as author. In the manager field, I will put the name of the person who I am sending the proposal to. Okay, So not my name, and I obviously don't have a manager, but the name of the person who I'm sending the proposal to. And in the company, Unlike what this shows right here, what I will usually do is put the name of the company that I am sending the proposal to. And I'll show you why I'm doing that in a minute. In any case, you're going to want to fill out um, the title, uh, the manager, if you're going to use it in the same way that I do, as the person that you're sending it to, and the company as the company you're sending it to. All right, so I'm going to jump out of here, and we're going to go um, back to the Word document so you can see this in real life. Okay, so here is the reason that I do that. So see here where it says, Dear Manager? The way that I control quality, and I make sure that I never make a mistake here, is that instead of putting someone's name in here directly, so in other words, instead of typing someone's name in here, what I do is I go ahead and I fill that person's name into the manager field, and therefore wherever manager is called for, and I'll show you how to do that in a minute, it will put their name in there. So let me show that to you. So I'm going to go to the file menu, and I'm going to go to, I'm going to get this to stop doing that. Thank you. Hold on. Whoops, sorry about that, guys. Let's go back to Word here and get it to size up. Okay, so I'm going to go to Advanced Properties. And now in the Manager field, I am going to say that I am sending this to Ms. Tia Juarez. Whoops, spell the name right. And the company that I'm going to be sending this to is WBDC. Okay, now... Uh, one advantage right off the bat is I can make sure that I have her name spelled correctly because I'm only entering it in one place. You do want to think about whether you're using their first name or their last name um, or both. I tend to stick to something that's pretty conservative and just use Ms. Juarez, um, and I'll hit OK. And now when I go back in here, notice that wherever the manager field was, her name is populated. Okay? And that way I don't have to be I don't have to go and check to make sure that I've got her name spelled in correctly in five places. I know that it's pulling it from one location and therefore I know her name is spelled correctly. The same thing is true with the company. So each place that you see WBDC here, that is a, a company field. And so it's pulling this from the document properties. Okay. Now, any questions on that? Any? Because I know we have to talk about fields st still, but is this conceptually making sense to you? Yes. yes. Okay. Um, so now, um, the rest, oh, and notice here that I've got a field called subject. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put the subject into my document properties and then that will automatically update. So I'm going to come in here to advanced properties and I find the subject and I say plug and play uh, proposals. So wherever I put in the field subject, the plug and play proposals will drop in automatically. So let's go back in here and see it's dropped in there automatically. That way I don't have to worry that, again, that I've misspelled it or I've mistyped it or whatever. Or God forbid, sent, you know, copied and pasted from some other document and left somebody else's information in there. Now, there are some things in here that you can see I've highlighted in yellow. So what are those things? Well, these are things that will change um, based on the individual proposal I'm sending, and I don't really have a way to automate them at all. So, for example, notice that I say, thank you so much for your, oopsie, now there's a typo, look at that. Uh, thank you so much for your time and attention on such and such a date. Well, I don't have any way of automating when we had that conversation. So what I've done is I've simply highlighted this here so that I go through and I provide the date here. So uh, Tuesday, January 10th. So I make sure that anywhere that it's highlighted in yellow, I have come through and look at it and make sure that I know um, that I've addressed that. So again, I have no way of automating specific reference to clients' needs. So here I've highlighted it in yellow, and then I'll go in and I'll type in, you know, we talked about the fact that your clients need this, this, and this, um, and that's why this curriculum will meet their needs, et cetera, et cetera. Same thing down here. Uh, can't automate this. This is going to be custom content. So I'll just write this when I'm getting ready to send this specific cover letter. Okay. Um, you may wonder why this the is here, and that's simply a grammatical question because depending on the name of the company and how it's named, I might or might not need a the in front of it. So I highlight it here so I can remember to come in and pull it out if I don't need it there. So again, anything that I cannot automate, I've actually come in here and I've put it in these two brackets, adjusted that for my own convenience, there's no technical reason to do that, and I've highlighted it in yellow so that I notice it and I go in and I address it before. Notice here that this is also something I need to address. Um, so the number of plug and play proposals. So again, I highlight the things that I need to um, go in and specifically fill out for each presentation. Now, um, up here, notice that I don't have to fill in the date. And the reason I don't have to fill in the date is I've dropped in a field for the date. So at this point, what I want to do is I want to move from document properties over to the inserting fields so that you can see how those uh, play into what we've been doing already. So while I'm moving over to fields, um, are there, have you guys used fields before? Am I singing to the choir here or, or what? Uh, a little bit. I'm not proficient. You know, I have used them in mer mail merges, but ah, not okay. through yep. the document properties. Yep, so you've definitely used them. How about you? Linda? I'm a neophyte. I'm just having exposure therapy here right now with this. Okay. All right. Well, you you know what? You are a neophyte who jumps in at the deep end. <laughs> I, I, I am. You are of the school of uh, throws, throw someone in the deep end and if they swim, they're good. <laughs> so, um, okay. So, let me talk about what a field is. Now, you may have noticed that I use some very odd examples and I do that because I think that relating something that may be new or unfamiliar to something that you may have had experience with or may be more for, uh, familiar helps. So in this case, to me, a field is like a placeholder. So for example, if you've ever gone to a fancy dinner or ever held one yourself and you, or maybe a wedding where your name is, you know, you have a place card. Um, and 
what they can do is if they're rearranging the seating at the last minute is they can say, oh, move this person over here, and they put their name into a different placeholder at a different seat. Um, again, like all my examples, I encourage you to come up with something that works for you, but that one works for me. Um, so it's a way of holding a spot for some information that probably will change. Okay, so that's what a field is. So let me exit out of here again, and let's go back to Word now. A lot of jumping around here in Word. Um, we're still on the Insert tab over here, and we're actually still going to go to the Quick Parts menu, and we're going to come all the way down here to Field. Now you might say, well, wait a minute. There's document properties, so why can't I just use document properties? And, and you certainly could. One of the things you're going to find as you dive a little more into fields, and, and if you write documents in Word of any length whatsoever, I recommend that you take the time to learn um, about fields because they really can streamline and professionalize what you're doing. What you'll find is there's a lot of overlap, okay? So there's a lot of overlap between what is a field and what is a document property. So a document property is just a specific group of fields. And again, you can see them listed here. I've got them highlighted. So um, a specific group of fields, and one of them is the manager field here that we've already talked about, the company field, the company address field, and so on. So the, the title, the subject, these are all fields, and they happen to be in the document property group. Okay, But they're also just plain fields. So let me go ahead and open up the fields box. And now you're going to see this box that if you have used it before or you've ended up here before, um, you may have gone, oh, wow, I'm not sure where I am, but I'm not in Kansas anymore. So this is something that typically happens with people when they're using Excel or Word or PowerPoint. Is, and, and, if, and if this has happened to you, you know, you'll get a chuckle out of this. Um, you know, you go in and you say, oh, today's the day. I know these programs offer so much more than I know how to do, and today is the day that I'm going to, you know, really figure this out. So you get into the office and you say, I've got 30 minutes, I'm going to figure this out. And you get a dialog box that looks something like this. And you say, yeah, no, today's not the day I'm figuring this out. Um, so what happens is you get, you can get intimidated by some of these boxes. So one of the things that I always try to do when I'm training is to make sure that y you know how to take these boxes apart, these dialog boxes apart. So that's what we're going to do here just for one minute. So first of all, here are all the categories of fields. So remember how um, I said that document properties is one category? Um, so that turns out to be a combination of document automation and document information. Those are categories of fields. Date and time are categories of fields. Um, mail merge, so um, Lisa mentioned mail merge, so here mail merge is exactly a, com is a, a category of fields, numbering, and so on. So all this box is, is different groups of fields, okay? And so if you want to narrow down this box here, and you don't want to look at all of those, one way to do that is to pick a category up here and you will get a smaller group here. Okay, but I'm going to leave it at all for a minute here. All right, so as we scroll down, you might say, well, holy cow, I don't even know what all these are, but you do know. So, for example, right here, date. This, when you select it, this is something that is really handy because when you insert this into a document, like I've done in my cover letter, it's going to automatically update with whatever date it is today when you go in and create that cover letter. Okay, so and you can create different styles. So you can you can say I want it to be in this style, I want it to be in this style. You know, you get the idea. You can have it, it can be different styles of date. 
Um, but the point here is that you're not typing the date when you open up and drop in that quick parts. It's automatically going to get populated for you. So let me cancel out of this box and just point it out what I've done. So this right here, this is a date field. Okay, so what I did was I inserted a date field. So let me do that for you down below so you can actually see that in action. So I'm just going to put it right here. Obviously, you would not put it right there in real life, but just for the purposes of our discussion. I'm going to go from quick parts to field, and I'm going to come down here to date. I'm going to pick my format. Let's say I want this long written out format, and I'm going to hit OK. And that's going to automatically insert a field, a placeholder. So remember, again, that concept of placeholder. A placeholder for a date that will automatically update when you open or drop in this quick part into a document. Another thing I just want to point out is that if you've ever had this happen to you where you had a field or you clicked on something and it had this gray box around it or you got this little guy up here, that means that that's a field. So if you ever have that happen to you and you haven't inserted it, it just means that someone else has inserted it and it's, it's not just plain text. They haven't just typed in Thursday, January 12th. It's actually a field. And if you wanted to manually update it, you could by coming up here and clicking on update. Well, there's nothing to update because this is the latest and greatest date here. But that's what this gray around text means. So again, up here, if you see, there's no gray around January 12th, but if I mouse over it, there is. And that means that that's a field. Okay. Any questions on that? Nope. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um, now what I'm going to do is just go back to fields real quick and explore a few other fields that are of use to you. So if we scroll down here, these are alphabetically arranged, and we go to Doc Properties, here you're going to see a whole bunch of characteristics of your, your document. Okay, So here is that Manager field that we filled out over in Document Properties uh, in the File menu. That's the exact same field. Okay, here is the subject field, exact same field that we saw over in file proper in document properties. Um, author, does this one have author? No, author is in a different grouping over here. Uh, subject, same exact uh, field that you saw. So again, there is a lot of overlap between these fields here and the ones that we see over in File, Advanced Properties. Okay, so each of these things here are fields. That's what they are. And here, it's just enabling you to fill them in in one place so that you can assign them to your document. Okay, so we're looking at exactly the same thing. We're just looking at a more comprehensive list of the fields here. Um, let me show you another one that, um, although it's not necessarily um, in directly related to what we're talking about here, I find it so useful that I, I, do, I don't want to teach a class on fields without talking about them. So one of the things that I'm a stickler for myself in any document that I produce is I want page numbering at the bottom of the page. And I don't just want the page number. I actually want it to tell me how many pages total there are in the document. So Lisa, I know that you know, you're with an architectural firm, so you guys, I'm sure, do large document submissions. And one of the things that I personally can't stand is if I get things out of order, I don't, if I don't know at the bottom what page this is of how many, I don't know that I have all the pages. So I particularly like to put that in my document. Did you, did you squeak? No, we're good. Okay. All right. So I'm going to actually come down here and I'm going to demonstrate this for you. And again, this is slightly out of the scope of what we're doing, but it's so useful that I, I can't resist. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to insert a footer. So I'm actually just happens to be I'm still on the insert menu here. And I'm going to insert a footer at the bottom of the page. A basic footer, nothing special. 
Okay, and it's saying, oh, you know, what do you want to put in here? And I actually am going to put in my standard footer. So I'm going to type the word page, and then I'm going to come back to the insert menu, and I'm going to go to quick parts, and I'm going to go to field, and I'm going to put in the field called page right here. Okay, and that's going to allow me to format it however I want to, if I want the little dashes or, you know, whatever it is I want to do. But I usually just pick one, two, three, and I hit OK. So now this is a field um, that's going to automatically update. As I add pages, it will keep track of those for me. But here's the kicker. This is not enough for me. Page two is not enough. I like to know how many pages I have total. So I'm going to go back to my fields and I'm going to insert one more field here, and that field is num pages, meaning the total number of pages in the document. Okay, so I like to have that information, and I do not want to have to keep track of it myself. Uh, it's something that you definitely will miss if you're in a hurry, um, but it's a place where fields really start to pay off. Um, now, one of the things you might say to me is, well, wait a minute, why, why aren't you just using this date and time up here? Um, I have found that using the standard ones doesn't give me as much control as I want to have. So there's nothing wrong with these up here. But I like to build this to be very, very specific in terms of what I want to see. So I just use the field. And, and once you get used to them, you start thinking, well, how did I ever live without them? Because they do keep track of things in your document, and you don't have to at that point. So again, go, go ahead. Did somebody have a question? No, I, that's interesting that you can do the fields on there. Oh, yeah. They, and and um, they really they they automate your process a lot of your processes so um, again if I add another page it's going to automatically put my footer down there and it's going to call it page three okay and it'll be page three of six rather than page three of five so again let me restate one more time what fields are because again you may not have used them per se um, but they are automatic properties that Word keeps track of, some of which you can interact very directly with in the file menu uh, and the advanced properties box, some of which you can use here by going here and selecting them. I definitely encourage you, again, when you have a minute or six or maybe more like two hours, spend a minute or two coming in here and looking at some of these because it depends on, on who you are what your business is, but some of them might be very useful for what you're doing in your business. Okay. Um, now, uh, like for example, revision numbers. So here's a field here that will automatically increment uh, based on the number of revisions that you've done, which is really useful. Okay. So again, you wouldn't have to keep track of your revisions yourself. One more thing I'm going to say about fields is that once you get used to using them, you might start thinking, well, gee, I would really like it if it did this. So there are ways to customize fields. I am not going to go into those right now because you, your head might go off your shoulders. But just keep that in the back of your head that if you ever start using them, you can say, and, and you start saying, well, gee, I really wish this field would do this. It's worth your time to go in and and experiment with what they call field codes because what that will allow you to do is customize the way the field looks or behaves. And again, I hardly ever use it, but sometimes it's a really useful feature. Okay, so I want to just wrap up by restating again what we've talked about and then make sure that I've talked to you about any questions you have. So the first thing we talked about is what is a quick part? And a quick part is basically a little snippet of language, and it doesn't have to be little literally, but a snippet or a piece or a part of a bigger document that stays fairly standard that you want to save so that you can drop it into documents on a regular basis uh, repetitively. 
the way you create it is very, very simple. You simply type in something. I'm just scrolling through so I can get to a blank page here. And create a quick part is as simple. I didn't type that right. Create a quick part. It's as simple as type what you're going to type, proofread it, circulate it, make sure everyone's good with it. Once they are good with it, select it, come up to quick parts and save selection to the quick part gallery and then give it a name that you will remember it's going to automatically go into the quick parts gallery so you can leave that there if you have categories of quick parts as I do you can create different categories for them okay I'm just going to drop this into manicure services you can add a description of what that quick part is you want to keep it in the building blocks template and you can tell it whether you want it to, when, it, when you drop it in, do you want it to just drop in? Do you want it to create a new paragraph? Or do you want it to create a new page? So you've got three options there. You hit OK, and now it's saved. Now, here is the key. What happens when you have a change to a quick part? I realize we haven't talked about that. So let's quickly talk about that. Um, so if you have a change to a quick part, where was the one that I just saw my typo in? Um, I saw it in my proposal cover letter. Okay, So here's my proposal cover letter, and I see that I have a typo here. So all I need to do is type in the correction and then re-save it. Okay? So you simply save over the previous version of that that you have. You don't actually edit per se, an existing quick part. You simply plop it into your document, create the changes you want to create, and then resave it into your document. Um, then we talked about um, file and, advan and properties, advanced properties. So again, these are just fields, a select group of fields that have been put on this menu so that you can actually fill them in conveniently and easily. I use these to make sure that I do not have typos or someone else's name. This way I can type it one location and be sure that it's always going to be accurate. And finally, we talked about getting into fields here and how many different kinds of fields there are um, in different groupings. And we uh, I just clicked on date and time. So notice there are lots of different kinds of date and time fields. But how many different kinds of fields there are, and we talked about a few of them here. And they are worth your time to investigate when you want to start automating your documents and making them a little more um, uh, accurate as well as being easy to update. All right, I'm going to stop there, and I'm going to see if there are any questions from either of you. I know, Linda, it's hard to have a question if you're just watching. Um, but um, you may have questions still, or Lisa, can you see a way that you might be able to apply this? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I've never done the field that way. I've always just done in a mail merge type of thing. So. Well, right, and any, it's so funny, I've never done a mail merge. So, you know, there's just, it just goes to show you how many varieties of experience, how many different ways you can use those fields. Right, right. Linda, do you see a way to use this? I don't know what your, what is your business, Linda? I'm in language services. Uh, oh. I'm a Spanish um, certified interpreter, um, kind of rethinking, you know, the whole scenario. So entrepreneurial would be the you know, category. I'm Jessica, let me just take a moment to compliment you. I love your sense of humor. I have burst out loud laughing <laughs> many times. <laughs> oh, good. I'm so glad. I, you know, because this stuff can be very dry, so I try to keep it real. <laughs> oh, and no, you had me at the shoe closet. So, <laughs> so uh, it, yeah, so, so basically, and I've been trying on, you know, I, I'm absolutely marveled that I can do this um, on the phone. So, it's just been a little bit an interesting thing of expanding it and making it small to see where you were talking about. But just, just to be familiar with screens has been a, a joy for me today. So thank you. 
Oh, good. Well, I'm, uh, you know, and, and I, like I always tell anybody who's taking my classes, whether, whether I'm teaching you in person or whatever, I guarantee you're not going to remember everything you heard here today. However, what I do want you to take away from this is tuck it in the back of your head. Gee, if you're retyping a proposal to somebody and you're like, wow, I'm cutting and pasting, I'm cutting, and something should be going off in your head. There should be a little ding, 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 and you can go Google, oh, how do I do this faster? And I guarantee you the quick parts will come up, and then you'll just go, oh, yeah, I remember that. So, again, don't walk away feeling like, oh, I'm not, you know, I can't remember everything here. But remember just that there's always a faster, easier, better way to do something. So... And you may have to Google to remember it, but there's no shame in that. Shoot, I have to Google to remember a whole bunch of this stuff. So, um, well, I'm really glad to have met both of you. Um, I'm super oh, grateful you. to yeah, I'm super grateful to WBDC for um, you know it's so great that they make this available to people. Um, so shout out to you guys from WBDC, and um, I don't know any other comments, questions, or I'll go ahead and close the call. Oh, I'm good. Thank you so much. No problem. Linda, good luck on your computer. Lisa, good luck. Um, and then if you guys from WBDC want to stay on the line, we can debrief real quick. Okay, great. Well, thanks. Hello. Happy New Year, everyone. Happy WBDC. <laughs> so, you're too, Jessica, too. And uh, thank you so much. Okay. All right. No problem. And um, hold on. I see Sue is on the line here. Sue, are you there? I didn't see you join. Sue? Okay. I don't know if Sue's there or hears me or anything. Um, Okay. Um, all right. So thank you, everybody, so much. And um, I'll talk to you maybe sometime in the future.